Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, if you haven't already, please give me a like and a subscribe. Uh, check out some of my other videos. I'll chuck one up there, or there, or wherever it is. Could never quite tell. <laughs> um, but uh, this one is just about uh, a sofa side table. Um, it's uh, kind of my bread and butter, if you like. This is one. This is one for a client. It's not. It's not uh, just kind of popped out of my head. It's nice and simple though, so, but uh, I'll give you some idea of what's going along, along, along the way. It's going to be made out of uh, Brazilian cedar. This part of Brazilian cedar. It's going to have a river down the middle. Um, we're going to split that. We're going to split that down there to create the river. But first of all, I've got to make a mould. So I've just got some brand new mould material. Um, and we'll crack on with making that now and then we should be able to get it into pouring today hopefully right let's crack on we've done so far is we've just cut up some uh, strips this is just chipboard right you do not need anything too fancy for your molds and I'll show you why that is in a minute so we've got a, we've got a flat bit of chipboard we've got some sides to length and that's that it's an easy and quick way to make up a mold the most important bit is taping it right, so we're going to get on with that now. Cheap packing tape. You do not need anything more expensive than cheap packing brown tape. Closer, look at that. Um, like I said, it's basic, basic chipboard, basic ta uh, packing tape, brown tape. As long as you cover everything that the resin is going to, uh, to touch with the tape, you won't have any problems in getting it out of the mould. And we can reuse this time and time and time again just by peeling off the tape. Uh, there aren't going to be any screws in it. I'm just going to glue it together. And then we're going to seal it with some silicon. It's nice and simple we don't need any fancy stuff i've tried all the you know the fancy plastics and the uh, melamine i always come back to either plywood or chipboard or block board or something like that because that's not the important bit the important bit is the tape and i can tell you with 100 percent certainty that cheap packing tape works absolutely fine so just got to knock up Glue it on, bung some silicon round it, and we'll be ready to then split the wood, which is going to be fun if it works. <laughs>
So I've split the wood. So you can see there, this piece is split into three, which only adds to the aesthetics of it. I think it's going to look very cool. The other one has split into two, which is there. We're putting them both in the same mould because why not? Makes life a lot easier. So now we need to do, we've got what we need to do. We've got some flake out, obviously. So we need to um, clean that up, sand that up a little bit. Not too much to take away the character, but just to get all the little bits and pieces so we don't have any bit, anything floating in our resin in a bit later on. Um, see the mould has been siliconed up, you saw me do that last time, put a little bit too much on but it doesn't really matter. And we need to clean out the mould, get it up into the uh, pouring shed and then we can set out and uh, cramp down our wood. So uh, I'll just clean this up and uh, get on with the rest of it. It's a bit of a soft wood. I'm just using a bit of 180 grit. Um, just a little bit of 180 grit. But I'll be careful though because otherwise we might get an owie. Splinters hurt. tables into here and I've got another mould here that's for a different project different video check that one out if you can that's for that's for resin strength uh, various ways of sealing the wood but um, that's for another video um, and I just thought well I'll, I'll do a quick bit on preparation because I think it's uh, it's very important very very important to prepare prep so I'm doing all my prep before I get anywhere near mixing up and mucking about with the resin. And that includes, like, I've got my dehumidifier going, I've got my heat gun ready, uh, level, spirit level, make sure everything's level, and the wood here, obviously. And we're just going to make sure, we're just going to spend a good half an hour, hour making sure... Prep, prep, prep! Why we prep? Let's move the wood up. Move the wood up, and uh, as you can see, hold on a sec. I'll just bring you down here. Woo! Woo! Anyway, right. <laughs> so yeah, that's why we prep, right? For a couple of reasons. Because I brought the wood up here and I piled it up, and I thought I had it in the right orientation, but no. So we just spend a little time making sure that we've got everything right. And the other thing is. I went to the shop the other day and I bought these buckets right? because I thought, well they're cheap, they're nice and I thought for sure when I was in the shop they were going to fit in there which is my vacuum chamber but they don't <laughs> so, you know, that's why we, we check things we prep, we prep things and now I've got a I'll probably cut these down or something, they'll fit in because they're tapered, look. So I'll cut them down or something. But yeah, so prep, prep, prep. Right, I think we've finished all our prep. Um, there's always something that's going to come up, so you just prep as much as you can. Um, so now we need to hold on. What we're going to use. Well, what we're going to do now is going to seal, because this is a fairly soft wood, 
it's going to be quite porous so we're going to seal with glass cast 3 that's basically mixing up some glass cast 3 and putting it on the edges of the wood and then we're going to pour our main at the B stage today we're not going to let it dry uh, we do that because you know we don't have to well we don't have to let it dry and we don't have to scuff it up and um, because it's porous and it's going to give loads and loads of bubbles um, we'll, we'll we'll do it at the B stage may put a couple of coats on depending on how it looks not really sure yet but um, I'll get I don't know 100 grams I think 100 grams would be plenty but we'll try 100 grams first I mean I really should work it out properly but can't be bothered so we'll just try we'll just try 100 grams first and see how that goes it's always good to have a nice selection of glass jars plus you get to eat lots and lots of cheesecake <laughs> So 100 grams is quite a lot, so <laughs> I just went, I went to 45 in the end. Seals the wood. So we need to put it on all the edges. So all the way down, tight in there. All the way down here, and on every edge apart from the middle one, just on the live edge, all the way down. Just having a little think, a quick recap so far. So we sealed the edges. Um, now we need to mix up the resin um, for the main pour. So a couple of issues with that. The bucket issue, <laughs> because I don't have a bucket to fit in the fucking chamber. But, <laughs> but I'll sort that out. Um, anything else to say so far? Yeah, I'm gonna use the vacuum chamber on this as well. So I'll try, I've cleaned the top of my vacuum, vacuum chamber up, so I'll try to get the I'll try to get the bubbles, or not the bubbles, the, the uh, well yeah they are aren't they, the bubbles, the bubbles coming out and how that works as we go. Right, let's go, let's go, let's go.
bucket, bucket cutting did not go well. <laughs> I don't know why I thought that was going to work. So it looks like I've just spent a tenner on buckets that don't fit. Oh God, I don't know. You probably don't find that as funny as I do, but it's just the kind of stuff that I do. So we'll change to this one. <laughs> worried about the amount of bubbles that we have in there and the pot being so small. Now I did forget to mention that the reason why I'm using such a small pot is that my big ones um, are uh, all very very dirty and they're old and stuff and like that and I need to order some more that hence the whole bucket debacle. <laughs> So let's see how this goes, if it, if it bubbles over, it bubbles over, and right, I'm not sure how well it's going to pick it up on camera, so we'll just have to, we'll just have to give it a bash. Stick with me on this one, alright, stick, <laughs> stick with me. Right, so I'm trying something here, that is my little... GoPro. I'm hoping this works otherwise I'm going to have a very wet camera. <laughs> I think it's going to look pretty sick if it works. So while we've been, oh god, while we have been doing all of that, our seal resin has been slowly drying. So it's not quite there yet. So we're just going to leave it another half an hour or so before we actually pour in. quickly with the heat gun that's all you need to do really and you can look around for bits in it just fish one bit out the rest of it seems okay so if we swirled it now I'll put some swirls in there that looks fantastic 
and it looks really great like that. Trouble is, it's not going to stay like that because it's all going to sink. So absolutely no point doing that now. We'll come back to it in a bit. So I've got table blanks back in the workshop now. Um, they've been run through the belt sander. I can't film that at the moment because uh, my belt sander has been moved to a, a company uh, that's looking after it for me um, and uh, it's a bit rude to be filming in their in their company but it's basically run through the belt sander at 120 grit um, I've cut it so it's in two sections we're going to make it into two tables next thing to do is to clear it up make, make sure that we get rid of any imperfections bubble holes that sort of thing there aren't too many on it to be fair there's there's a couple but we'll get it sanded off um, and then we'll be able to see that properly we'll um, we'll start with probably uh, 120 grit uh, on the orbital uh, got 120 I'm using mesh pads nowadays which are fantastic if you can get hold of some mesh pads they're really really good they're much better than the ones with the holes in I find um, they don't leave as many pigtail marks really really good so if you want to uh, get yourself some of those they're they're fantastic for your orbital um, run through one well I'm sorry I'm going to use um, Osmos one of my favorite finishes it's just, just it's really hard it's nice to apply uh, but we, we need to go up to 320 grit with that so we're going to go 120 uh, we're going to go probably 150 180 240 320 uh, 340 possibly or 320 um, and then leave it at that and then we're going to apply the Osmo but I've got a couple of miter joints in it and we do that on the miter saw um, it's, uh, it's quite a tricky thing to do to get right because it's quite wide so I'm hoping to set the or I've got to get the miter saw set up correctly because uh, you only get one go at that so and it's got to be right so yeah we'll we'll get on with um, doing a bit of sanding and tidying up now just chuck the blanks back into the um, clean workshop or the pouring room what we're going to do I think is give them a, a, um, a coat of oil uh, this is not going to be the finished coat we're going to sand it back and reapply another coat afterwards when they've been cut the reason I'm doing this is so that when we do cut uh, we don't get as much chip out now this is a softwood it's Brazilian cedar it's, it's uh, it's quite a nice wood but it's a right pain to work with and it's very sort of um, carroty uh, if you like it's got strands in it so it's, it's difficult to cut straight uh, it, I mean not straight it's difficult to cut um, in, a, in a nice uh, to get a nice edge on it so what we're going to do is we'll, we'll use a top coat um, to help bind if you like the wood together which will hopefully give us a cleaner cut we're going to put tape over the cut as well uh, it's just another layer uh, or just another added layer to help uh, get a cleaner cut
Okay, so we can see back in the workshop, the uh, <laughs> dirty workshop, to um, measure and cut these. Um, we're going to cut them on a mitre saw. Uh, we've got to cut them at an angle, obviously, because we've got to go up and along and then down again. So we've got a 45, minute, uh, 45 uh, degree mitre on them. Uh, this is probably the most trickiest part because you've got to make sure that your mitre saw or whatever you're using, table saw, mitre saw, is perfect. I've been doing a few test cuts and I think, I think I've got it pretty much spot on. But it's not, you know, just take it steady, measure. Measure twice, cut once as they say. The angles, um, 45 degrees, it's gone pretty well. You just take your time with that, with a bit of tape, and the oil really helps to get you a nice clean line. Now we need to glue it together, and I'll appreciate that not everybody's got one of these, but this is a Fez Tool Domino, and it is fantastic works really really well um, it's for dowels uh, other biscuit machines are available <laughs> but this one is it, just fantastic and uh, you just saw me marking out where the dominoes are going to go and that will make sure that the joints are in exactly the right place So here we have mitre joint uh, jig clamp thing mark do 
Here is Mark 1. Didn't like that very much. Um, although it did, it did work, it worked okay, but I could have got it better. Um, I've, I have tried in the past quite a few mitre joint um, clamps and stuff like that, but I find, or I have found now, this is probably the best one. Uh, just knocked up out of some old scraps. Um, now this wouldn't normally work without the domino joints in there because obviously if you haven't got anything to hold it to stop it slipping as soon as you put the clamps on it's just going to go like that so it's lucky that we got the uh, the domino joints in there obviously that helps with strength and it actually this is dry jointed at the moment so like I said it's dry jointed at the moment just to make sure that it's square and everything and I'll uh, take it apart and put some glue on it and glue it up properly and then we're nearly we're nearly done we've got to re-sand and finish and then then we're done it's looking pretty good at the moment look even better when it's finished so literally the last little bit now um, I've already oiled the insides of them again um, they're looking very nice just got to flip them over oil the outside and we're done we are using, by the way, an Osmo Top Oil finish. I love this finish. It's very easy to apply with a non-abrasive white pad. Just get these from eBay. They're fantastic. Stick it on your orbital at a slow speed. Just a slow speed first of all, just to get it in and then you can get a little bit faster but not too fast until it's all in and done. Mm -hmm. 